Hi everybody, Valentin Totoro from Alia here. Today we're going to set up the PeopleSoft test framework and I'm going to walk you through the steps of doing that. First, we'll start within our PIA, logged in. Uh, obviously, you want to have uh, elevated access to do a lot of this and people tools access. So we're going to navigate to menu. We're going to go down to people tools. Okay, within people tools, there's a few prerequisites. The first, of course, within your people tools integration broker um, configuration. Within our gateways, we want to make sure obviously our integration broker is set up. Uh, we can ping and our gateway. Let's say it loads up here. Okay, if you have a load balancer, of course, work with your team to make sure that's working okay, but we want to ping the gateway. We want to make sure that it's active and that's step one. Step two to configuring the PeopleSoft test framework. Again, we're going to continue working within the PA itself, and then we'll actually set up the client. Uh, but these are the prerequisite steps. So we know the, the gateway is active. Then we're going to go into integration broker again, to the main integration integration broker menu. We're going to open up um, the nodes. So we actually want to go to integration broker, integration setup, nodes. Okay. We want to make sure that our local node is also pingable. Okay. So we want to search in here. Okay, within the general search, of course, if you know what your node name is, you go ahead and uh, search by it. But if you don't know what your local node is, just you know, hit on the menu. You'll see the Y for your local node. Go ahead and open it up. Uh, if you're doing this out of the box in a palm image, it's going to be PeopleSoft EP for finance, PeopleSoft um, uh, HR for uh, HCM. Okay, here we want to go to the connectors tab. And if uh, your PS7 has set this up properly, we want to just ping the node. And we want to see success here, making sure that the local node is pingable. Okay. There's one additional thing we want to do within the node definition, and that is going to be on the anonymous node. So if we research, uh, let's actually, sorry, go back to the main search, clear this. We want to go to that anonymous node. Okay, and you'll see here, if we sort this by name, there's an anonymous node. We want to make sure that the user that's defined on the node definition here which right now, of course, this is the out of box, so you're using VP1. We wanna make sure that the VP1 user security profile uh, has a PTF uh, role attached to it, okay? We'll go to that next, all right? Uh, I'm gonna actually keep um, the nodes uh, here, but I'm gonna open up a new tab and actually go to that security component. So again, we'll go to our main menu. We wanna go up, up a directory to people tools, security, right here. We want to go to user profiles, user profile, and then look within that VP1 role. Okay. Most of the time, obviously, this would, we we don't don't keep this as VP1. We assign a specific user to it, and we want to make sure that within this list uh, that we have um, something PTF user, PTF administrator. Uh, here we see that we have PTF administrator, editor, and user. Okay, which is great. Um, you don't, don't need all three of them. If you have PTF administrator, you have all the roles of editor and user. Um, editor means somebody who can just record, but they don't have uh, security for the execution options or to run some of the uh, adjoining tools. And then a PTF user role uh, would be somebody who can just run tests or set up uh, definitions, okay? Obviously, this is tied to the VP1 role, which you see on the anonymous node, and that is a requirement. You have to have at least one node on this, whoever that user is. But also for any user that's going to be authenticating to the client itself, you also want to give them one of those three roles, okay? Uh, and with one more thing within the definitions, if we go back to uh, integration broker, if you are doing out of the box and you're just getting PTF stood up and kind of working on it, you probably don't have certificates set up on these environments, okay? So there's one more thing if you don't have certificates and you're just kind of playing with PTF and this is kind of a, a POM environment, you also want to go to your service definitions. So again, integration broker, integration setup, service definitions. I just went to this, the wrong one. Main menu, uh, service operation definitions, okay? And within the service definition, you can do kind of a wildcard uh, SSL wildcard search. And you'll see that there is a definition called PTTST config no SSL, okay? You wanna open up that definition and you wanna make sure it's activated. I've activated it because I've been using PTF in this uh, local environment, which is running on a plum image here on my machine. 
uh, out of the box, this is not activated, okay? And your Wolt PTF will not work in these lower non-prod environments. So you wanna make sure that this is activated for your uh, config no SSL service operation definition, okay? And then of course you save it after you click on that activate, it says it's saved and now that is all the setup that's required on the PS side to get PTF working. Now, to actually install the client, what you wanna do, and of course you have to have access to um, your people tools, um, if you do download the VM image, obviously you want to you want to map the drive so you can pull uh, these files off it. You don't have to install the full People Tools suite, okay? Like what what drives your app designer or data mover that goes through the entire install process, and you have to have a TNS names within the Oracle database folder. Here, what we want to do is just go to the PS Home. We want to go to the Setup folder. We want to go to the PS Test Framework. And then within here, what you can do is just run this setup.batch file, okay? And this batch file, what it does is it just effectively checks for the version that's already installed within your program files. And then of course, uh, adds um, those um, and then a shortcut on, on the desktop, okay? If you are running multiple versions like I am, I've got several versions of PTF, you can actually grab this archives folder right here, okay? And the archives folder actually contains everything you need to uh, to run PTF. PTF uh, as of 8.5.6 and newer doesn't need an installer. Uh, so it's not actually putting D words within your registry. It's just really literally running the executable using its DLLs um, through net framework to build the, the UI so you can uh, interact with it. Okay. So this my method is to actually copy this archives folder out of here out of your the, currently 860.03 jump uh, quickly to your program files of course you have to have security to do this uh, paste it in here and you can actually name uh, this new archives folder where'd you go there it is you can name this your ptf 86003 for instance okay uh, and then from there of course we can create a quick shortcut to your desktop the ptf executable itself is called ps test fw.exe right here so you can just right click on that send to desktop shortcut and it creates a shortcut on your desktop okay now to log into the tool obviously we can go to our desktop and double click on the shortcut or you can just run ptf right there from that executable which is going to bring bring your login screen okay and this login screen as you saw a second ago was all grayed out so you want to click on the new button and then actually define your connection so i know this is my fin palm environment i think this was palm 50, 50 i believe Okay, you wanna go to your uh, machine. Obviously, I've installed this locally, so uh, 192.168.251.9, uh, and then you wanna target your SSL node, okay? If you don't know what your SSL node is, you can get through it through the web profile or through psadmin web server config. Uh, out of the box, it's 8443, okay? Even though you, we're not using certificates, because we enabled that um, service operation to allow untrusted SSL, you, we want to go through the SSL channel. We're not going to go through the 80 channel through the 8443. And that's how the communication is going to happen from our database where PTF is configured, all the tests reside um, to the client, which is this client itself. Okay. That's why it's a little different than the rest of the people tools. Those go through the TNS names and channel. This goes through integration broker, making it very lightweight and easy to use anywhere. We also target the node. Remember that local node I pinged earlier, the, the local node of PSFT underscore EP, and then the user we set up. And again, right now it's the same user that's on the anonymous node. Usually it's different. We want to set up you know, users or use users that already have access to our system, give them those roles, PTF administrator, PTF editor, uh, so that they can authenticate into PTF. So I'm going to put in the password, click OK. Um, you'll still get this warning message when you do authenticate. Uh, this is telling you this is not a secure connection. It's just going to happen. Um, it doesn't mean anything. You just want to click OK, and then you'll be brought into the PTF tool itself. Okay. Within the PTF tool, obviously there's additional setup, but we've got PTF configured. We've stood it up. We've been able to open it up and that's all the setup required to get your PTF up and running. Thank you and we'll see you guys next time.